Hello, Marysville. I'm Connor, and this is Chloe, and we have Hi. Keith on today. Keith, tell us exactly what it is you do. Uh, I'm the battalion chief for the Marysville Fire District, mm -hmm. right here in good old Marysville, Washington. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how did you begin the process of becoming a firefighter? Or were you a firefighter at first, or were, have you always been a um, battalion? Oh, no. It, uh, I had to work my way up mm -hmm. to it, you know, from the firefighter, captain, mm -hmm. and eventually a battalion chief. Yeah. How, how long have you been in the um, firefighting uh, business? Since I was 19, oh, since okay. 1990. I joined the U.S. Air Force mm -hmm. in 1990 as a firefighter and just kept continued with it ever since. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's about 26 years now. Have, have you always wanted to be a firefighter? Like, is that what you aspired to be when you were a kid? Uh, you know, my, my dad's best friend was a firefighter in Bellevue, mm -hmm. and we got to go visit him at the fire station, and I always loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up going to Highline Community College right out of high school, graduated in Marysville Pilchuck in 89. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to Highline for a year on a track and cross country scholarship, and I was just there pretty much to run. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really serious about what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I always had firefighting in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, when I finally realized, well, you're not going to be able to run your whole life. You're going to have to figure out something to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to join the Air Force as a guaranteed spot mm -hmm. as a firefighter. Tell me what it, the training is like. What is it, um, you know, like what, what is the process like? Uh, the process is, well, there's several different ways you can go about it. If you tested for Seattle or Everett or some of the big cities, they'll take you in right off the street with no training and teach you exactly the way they want you to be trained. Mm -hmm. um, there's other ways, like here in Marysville, we have a part-time program where you come in as a part-time firefighter, and then eventually you will test to become a full-time firefighter. But you have to have already have your Firefighter 1 certificate and your emergency medical technician. Oh, okay. Yeah. So once you have both of those, we'll take you on as a part-timer. Mm -hmm. And then once you get hired as a full-time firefighter, you'll go to a uh, 12 or 13-week academy. Mm -hmm. And that's all you do for the whole 13 weeks is train. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it seems like that kind of takes like a long time to become a firefighter. Like, was there certain motivations that you had that like held you to that course? Yes, it was. Uh, you know, once you get into it, uh, you, and you you'll hear this from other firefighters. Mm -hmm. We think it's the greatest job in the world, <laughs> and you'll uh, like I say, you'll hear that over and over again. And once you get it in there and it's in your blood, it's hard to really get away from it. So that, that is very, very motivational right there. Yeah. So it sounds like it's a pretty strenuous process of becoming a firefighter. It is. Yeah. It does. For some, some people it takes, you know, eight years. Mm -hmm. um, others can get lucky and get hired in one or two years, mm -hmm. you know. It just, yeah, it just depends on, you know, mm -hmm. you got to be good at taking the tests, good at interviews, mm -hmm. uh, physical agility tests, yeah. you got to be good at that. So. Yeah, I mean, it can end up being a very long process. Mm -hmm. It's very sought mm -hmm. after. <laughs> so how long did it take you to become a firefighter? Like, how many years? So I joined the Air Force, like I said, yeah. um, and went through boot camp and then straight to the fire academy. So I was, you know, mm -hmm. trained as a firefighter right off the bat. Um, and then I came, when I got out of the Air Force, I came back home here, and um, I worked at Marysville Fire District as a part-time firefighter for a couple of years. Uh, worked for the uh, federal government at the Navy base in Sandpoint when, when it changed over to Everett. I worked in Everett. And as a part-time firefighter in Marysville, back then you had to be there for two years before you could even test mm -hmm. to be a full-time firefighter. So with the three years it took me once I got out of the Air Force to get on with Marysville. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What skills did you develop on the job that you didn't expect to develop from training? Oh man, you, you, there's so many different skills. Um, <laughs> we like—I like to call it plate spinning. Firefighters have to spin plates, and they'll get one spinning over here, and then they get another one spinning over here, then they'll start another one over here. Well, oh, this one's slowing down. You got to speed that one back yeah. up, and you always got to keep these plates going. You're, mm -hmm. There's, you know, 80% of our job is uh, medical emergencies, oh, so wow. we get really, really good at um, handling, you know, emergencies with medical issues involved, trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, there's motor vehicle collisions, you know, we have tools that we can cut people out of cars with, you got to get good at that. Mm -hmm. There's always fires, you know, that's mm -hmm. a whole different ball game. Um, we have two uh, special operations units, um, one is technical rescue and one is hazmat. 
so there's guys that can branch off and go into those special ops as well. Mm -hmm. But they've got to keep their core firefighting, emergency medical technician, yeah. all that other stuff. You know, mm -hmm. they got to stay proficient in all mm -hmm. that too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it, it's involved. It definitely is involved. It sounds like there's much more to being a firefighter than just fighting fires. It sounds yeah. like there's. It sounds like it's way more advanced than that. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, what what really makes you stick with being a firefighter rather than like changing your career? What like part of being a firefighter resonates with you the most? Like a reason. You know the. Uh, the thing about firefighting is you're, you're actually, one, you're helping people, but you get to make a difference. And I mm -hmm. think that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, you're, you're contributing to your community. Um, you know, people call us, and it's not always their best day, <laughs> but we're there to help them. You know, we're trying to make that day better any way we can. I like to call it, um, uh, we're trying to make organized chaos organized, or chaos organized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which always doesn't work out, huh? No, it, mm -hmm. not the way you plan usually, but you do the best you can. Yeah. So, so that, that, that oh. basically, sorry, to answer your question, that's what keeps me, you know, coming back and yeah. you know, passionate about it. Because it kind of seems like it could be a, like, stressful job at times. Yes, it is stressful. You, you do get to see a lot of things that you probably wouldn't want to see, but yeah. um, that's just part of the job. And we've got a really great support system for, for things like that. Okay, so we're going to head into a segment and talk a little bit more about the support system afterwards. This is a segment about cards. Welcome back, Marysville. I'm Connor, and this is Chloe. And we still have um, Keith here. Sorry <laughs> about that. Kind of lengthy. <laughs> um, so I was actually curious about what firefighting schedule looks like. Like, do you guys do a couple of weeks on and like a couple of weeks off, or how does that work? So right now uh, we work what's called a um, four platoon system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we work 24-hour shifts. We start at seven in the morning, and we get off the next morning at seven o'clock. Um, and it's uh, it's one one on, and then twenty four off, then another twenty four on, and then we get five days off. But we also come back for what are called debit days mm -hmm. throughout the year. So fourteen times a year, um, we will come back and work on a different shift mm. with other with other the other guys. So mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's a nice system we got going right now, better than the one we've had, which was a modified Detroit is what they called it, and it was a little different. Mm -hmm. well, what was that like? That one was one on, one off, one on, one off, one on, four off. Oh, wow. But it had Kelly days, which were extra days off. Okay. Mm. With firefighting, it can be, um, especially here in Marysville, we're going to be pushing around 15,000 calls this year. Mm -hmm. And we have five mm -hmm. stations running those 15,000 calls. Mm -hmm. So there's times where um, we do have bunks in, in the uh, fire station. Yeah. So if we can catch some sleep, we mm -hmm. can. But that's not always the case, and anymore it's uh, pretty busy all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I was informed that you actually sung the national anthem at the Seahawks game, the opening game, actually. I did, yes, so 9-11. Yeah, so tell us, tell us how that was for you. What kind of experience was that for oh, you? Oh, it was unbelievable. I, you know, I've been a Seahawks fan since they were uh, created in 76, yeah. you know, as a little guy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge Seahawks fan, yeah. and uh, I've done uh, several Mariners games uh, in 2006, I think, was the first one I did. Oh, wow. Mm. I get to do three or four of those a year at Safeco. Okay. And so the Seahawks game was my dream. Yeah. I was on, and I thought, well, there's probably no way. We only have eight <laughs> games. Yeah. Know. Baseball has 160 games. Yeah. So the odds are a little mm -hmm. better there. Um, but they wanted to, uh, and it was a home game on 9-11. So um, one of the guys that I work with, he's a captain at Marysville Fire. Uh, he's one of the flag runners. Oh, when they he? score, he runs one of the big flags yeah. across. He's actually uh, part owner of the CrossFit gym here in Marysville, oh, Marysville wow. CrossFit. So uh, he mentioned to his supervisor, hey, we got a guy up in Marysville Fire that sings the anthem. Mm -hmm. What do you think about having him do 9-11, you know, since it's, you know, a home game yeah. on 9-11? On and they were kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, then I, I turned my uh, demo in, mm -hmm. and apparently they liked it because they called me and said, hey, uh, what do you think about doing the anthem on 9-11? And I was in shock. I was like, oh, I think I, I can make myself available for that. that. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah. it was pretty neat, and they really did roll out the red carpet. We also had 35 of our firefighters mm -hmm. go down and help hold the big flag across the field. Mm -hmm. So being there with them and then the military, the police, it was it was very very emotional. What what, and what was that like doing it for you, especially on a day like 9/11? Like, how how did that make you feel? Oh, it was it, I was full of emotions. It was everybody was. It was just the uh, the magnitude of it is it's it's unbelievable. It's the, and it's so loud on that field. Um, the the sound guy gave me the little earpieces. Mm -hmm. I put those in, and he says, "Okay, you're probably gonna have to turn that thing all the way up, but." you want to check your key just put it into your microphone because mm -hmm. I have it on my phone yeah mm -hmm. put it in your microphone you can check your key well yeah, no that didn't work <laughs> I tried that and I couldn't hear anything because mm -hmm. it was just and it was just people milling around getting ready to for the you know anthem to start and still getting in their seats and yeah. so it was it's that added on with the fact that it's 9-11 and you know I get the chance to represent our community mm -hmm. our fire department yeah. And you know, just the fire department in general, mm -hmm. fire service. Yeah, it was it was very, very emotional. Yeah. So, yeah. were you nervous singing oh, yeah. in front of sixty eight? What? How many? How many seats does it hold? Like sixty nine thousand people close or something to 69, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. did you have any? I mean, were you nervous or since you had all, since you had already performed at Safeco, did was it kind of just like a breeze for you or? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, Safeco's is it's. I don't get as nervous anymore just mm -hmm. because I've been doing it for years. Yeah. But this was different. This was, you know, just like we had just talked about. It was 9-11. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, all my, my buddies are down there holding the flag. Um, and, you know, they had the whole controversy going on. What, what were oh, the Seahawks yeah. going to do? Were they going to yeah. stand? Were they going to sit? Mm -hmm. So it actually, I was told later that they broke the record for the most people in their seats for an anthem at CenturyLink. Oh, really? 64,000 oh, wow. people were there yeah. for that because they wanted to see what was going to happen with mm -hmm. the Seahawks and their protest. Yeah. Everything. So it was, yeah, it was, it was incredible. It was just a, a lifetime experience. You probably I'll never get to do it again, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your opinion on the, uh, the protest going on now? Well, f being a veteran, you know, um, I kind of think, you know, I see what their point is mm -hmm. and w what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And, and I have no problem with that. Uh, to me, the anthem stands for the men and women that gave their lives mm -hmm. for our freedom. Mm -hmm that very freedom that they're using to protest the anthem. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just wish they could do it maybe in a different way, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, yeah. I just, uh, I kind of think you should just leave that alone mm -hmm. and, and, and leave it for those men and women that died. I, I completely 100% agree with you, yeah. Yeah. We're actually gonna take another quick break for a segment, but we'll be right back with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. There she is. Oh, hey, so you 
you know the the homecoming, right? Yeah. You wanna do that? The homecoming? Yeah, sure, we can totally go. I mean I already have my dress. We can totally go out for like dinner or something. I've always wanted to go with you as like friends, like we're such good friends and like you've always really been like a brother to me, I mean. This would be great. Welcome back, Marysville. I'm Connor, and this is Chloe, and here mm -hmm. with Keith. Um, Keith, I wanted to ask you: when you sung at the CenturyLink, did you get to meet any of the Seahawks players? I did. Yes, we got to meet. Uh, um, I got to meet Ricardo Lockett. Oh, who's really? The, the one that got injured yeah. really bad last year, and mm -hmm. I talked with him for a little bit. Um, and then several of the other guys got to meet with Pete, Coach Terrell, and um, they saw Tyler Lockett, Doug Baldwin. Oh, wow! All those guys were down there. Um, mm -hmm. And a couple of guys uh, saw Steve Largent. Oh, really? Um, Jim Zorn. Because they were all there yeah. for the Patera mm -hmm. era um, celebration they were doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was, it was cool. I, I, I was kind of being ushered around because I couldn't leave my uh, escort side. She said, You can't leave me. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have to be in this spot yeah. at this time. Yeah. So, so yeah. Sec security was pretty tight, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes, it was oh, very yeah. tight, yeah. yeah. So, have. So I'm a, have you always been a singer then? Like, have you always done that since you were a little kid? Well, I like to sing, but I didn't get really into it until after I got out of the Air Force. Okay. Um, as, as a matter of fact, uh, you're Mr. Chapin. Mm -hmm. uh, him and I started singing karaoke, you know, as for fun. Yeah. And kind of took it another level and mm -hmm. tried starting a boy band back in the day oh so the you were, so you were actually a part of that well, well not the not the, the one he was oh, early oh, early okay, okay. before the the one that yeah yeah he had with tiger and mm. michael and all that yeah yeah yeah, yeah we, we played around with that a little bit yeah so how did you get invited to sing at the mariners games originally uh same, that was same kind of thing the five-year anniversary of 9-11 oh okay and they wanted somebody in uniform to sing mm -hmm. so i uh, a buddy another captain of mine uh, at Marysville Fire, he said, hey, I, I heard they're trying to find somebody in uniform to sing the anthem. You got to try out for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, ah, no, I don't know. And so then like a week later, he's like, hey, they still haven't found anybody yet. So I went and recorded a demo and emailed it in. Mm -hmm. And about 20 minutes later, she called me and said, hey, can you, can you do it? And I'm like, whoa, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> I'll do it. But it, no, I was pretty freaked out. Yeah, of course. Uh, that was, I hadn't done anything that big before. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I went down, did it. She had me come down actually three hours early to practice because they have what's called the slap. So once you sing into the microphone, you don't hear your voice again for a second and a half. Yeah, so like the echoing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they call it the slap. So uh, she had me come down and sing the whole thing a mm -hmm. couple of times through just to get used to that because I got up there and I went, oh, say, and I was like, whoa. She's like, yep, that's why I brought you down here early. Yeah. <laughs> so I, now I just got to kind of power through it yeah. and, and concentrate, and then I'll ask whoever's listening, hey, how'd that sound? Because I can't really listen to myself sing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. At the Seahawk game, I had the earpieces mm -hmm. in because that's a two-and-a-half-second slap, so you oh. probably couldn't do it. Yeah, it would no. be really hard no, to do. No, there's no way. So, uh, but at Safeco, they don't give you those earpieces. So. Yeah, no. Which is fine. Once you get used to it, it's, it's mm -hmm. not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and they just started asking me back ever since. Oh, I yeah. do three or four a year. Okay. Yeah. So how many say, so you started back in what, 2006? 2006. So you've been, yeah, so you've done probably what, like close to 30 Maryland probably, games? Probably, yeah. Probably. Something like that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. Probably about right. That's su like such a cool thing though, you know, oh, so to, cool. to be able to yeah. say that. Yeah. 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 They, uh, uh, they, they give me four tickets. Oh, okay. In a parking pass. Oh, really? And then whoever I bring with me gets to go down the field with me oh, for okay. the game and while I'm singing. And it's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Great seats. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually wanted to touch on the firefighter aspect again. Okay. Um, what, what kind of friendships have you developed over the years? Like, some of your, uh, are you personal friends with any of your coworkers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we grow up with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we were all in our early 20s. We came on together and... And uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it, firefighting is like a family. Mm -hmm. We call it our second family because we, you know, we eat together, we, we sleep together, we cook together, we, you know, do all these, wash our clothes together, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and it becomes, like I said, like a second family. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 
it's uh, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot in a different, a lot of different jobs. There's like a big sense of community like that, and that's really cool that the fire department has that. Yes, it, it's, yeah. it's huge, and hopefully that's why most people do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you um, what your biggest success has been so far as a firefighter. What, what would you say your biggest accomplishment has been, or um, you know, th is it like helping people or, you know, what, what, do, what do you like about the job? I think that's it. Yeah. You know, you, you, uh, we've saved some lives, mm -hmm. which is, you know, always a great feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't always save all of them, unfortunately. Um, but when you do, it's, it's like, it's unbelievable. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So we're going to actually go to another segment break real quick, and then we'll be back to talk about a couple more things. Okay. Oh, I totally forgot that there was coffee. Okay, kids, welcome to the first day of firefighter school. Okay, so step one on becoming a great firefighter. Final step, the most important, cleaning tables. Yes, nice. So I, I don't want to be disrespectful, but how does this apply to being a firefighter anyway? You have to trust me. Every great firefighter, they have to start here. I started here. Now look at me. instructor go. Alright, who's ready to learn about being a firefighter? Yeah man, the class starts at three. That girl teaching me, was that the janitor? Must have been. Yes! Welcome back to Marysville Get Jewel and here we are with Connor, me, and Keith and we are actually going to start talking about kind of the physical things about being a firefighter, more like what are the outfits like, what are the fire, fi or the fire trucks like? So we have uh, several different types of vehicles mm -hmm. that we uh, deploy. We have engines, which carry the water and the hose. Mm -hmm. We've got one ladder truck, which is a 100-foot uh, bucket truck. I'm sure you guys have seen it around mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, what we call medic units, which is for advanced life support. Uh, we have paramedics on those units that go down to Harborview and train for a year mm -hmm. with the doctors down there and learn paramedicine. And so they treat, uh, they they're able to push drugs, um, start airways, which they put a tube down your throat to breathe for you. Um, and they do a lot of advanced stuff. So they ride on the paramedic unit. And we also have aid cars, which are BLS units, basic life support. Um, th and those will get called out on more minor injuries, um, mm -hmm. non-life-threatening stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, what I drive is a, a SUV, basically. It's a command rig, we call it. Um, and then we do have a few maintenance trucks that you'll see roaming around once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, we, have a, we have a shop um, that maintains all of our apparatus, you know, service oil changes, mm -hmm. anything breaks, we have to have that all done. So yeah, we've got quite the fleet out there. Um, as far as the gear, um, so what a firefighter will wear is we call it our personal protective equipment. And it consists of from feet to, to head, it's, it's boots with steel toes, it's steel shank. Um, and those will come up to about right there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we have bunker pants and bunker coat. And what those are is a three-layered system. It's got the outer shell, which is Nomex, which is 
fairly fire uh, resistant, an inside vapor barrier, which protects from uh, you know outside moisture, mm -hmm. and then inside's got a, another liner, mm -hmm. we call it, um, and so that covers all of that. We've got gloves that go on um, that are uh, thermal resistant, um, and then we also wear a hood, a Nomex hood, which goes up and covers everything that can be exposed on your face, mm -hmm. your ears, your neck, uh, of course a helmet. Um, and then if, if we go into a uh, w environment we call IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and health, mm -hmm. then we'll be wearing our SCBA too, which consists of a mask and then a tank with purified air on the mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. with a 45 minute bottle. How, so how much, pound, like how many pounds does that add do you think uh, that it, it adds total about 50. It's about 50? Yeah, 50 okay. plus, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of uh, pack you're wearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, is it hard for you to move around, like, in the in the uniform, or is it, you know, is it at least durable a little bit, or? Yeah, I mean, it is. It's, it's cumbersome. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, so you're wearing a mask that yeah. has a, a view like that, so your, your peripheral vision is obstructed a yeah. little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, when you go into a fire, um, it, most of them, the smoke will be down to the floor, so you can't even see your buddy next to you. You have to stay in contact oh, by, really? by either, you know, touching each other or verbally. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody has a radio, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then you've got to, you've got all that gear on. Now you've got to pull this hose that's fully charged, <laughs> full of water, through the house and get to where yeah. you need to go. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes climbing over stuff and. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cumbersome, but mm -hmm. you, you get used to it after a while. You train on it enough, it's mm -hmm. like anything else. So is the training like, do you guys actually like set something on fire and then have people go in and put it out? Is it really like real life, like, as, as I would say? Yeah, we, uh, we do, um, we go up to the North Bend Fire Training Academy. Okay. It's just east of North Bend a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And we'll go up there and do live fires. Um, it's, I think it's the, we have to do it semi-annually okay. um, to be proficient mm -hmm. and stay qualified, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and we used to be able to take a house that somebody was going to destroy. They, instead yeah. of them bashing it down with a backhoe or something, we would go in and just do live burns on it and yeah. eventually burn it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But we don't do that anymore. The, the EPA doesn't like that. How come? Uh, there's pollution in oh, the pollution. air. Oh, pollution, yeah. yeah. Then you have to do it as... Uh, an abatement on it and to make sure all the asbestos is out. Oh, okay. And, you know, it just seems like a hassle. Yeah, it, it, it really, yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to anybody wanting to be a firefighter um, to, tr 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 to try to get a leg up, like if they were still in high school? Because I, I want to be a firefighter when I grow up. Is there any advice that you would give to me? Uh, you know what I would tell you is we're fortunate here because Everett Community College does the um, Firefighter oh. One program mm -hmm. and EMT. Um, I would say go get that, get your two-year fire science degree, mm -hmm. because that's kind of a big deal now. Um, you can't even promote within the Marysville Fire District without at least a two-year degree mm -hmm. now. So if you don't have that, you're kind of behind the eight ball mm -hmm. going in. Yeah. If you can get that before you even start, it's, you, you've got a huge advantage. And even a four-year degree is, 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 is even better, yeah. Well, it looks like we've ran out of time here, Keith. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to the camera before we go? Uh, make sure you guys uh, check your smoke detectors. Make sure the batteries are good every six months because that, uh, that'll help us out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. All right. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Keith. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming. That.